Hey everyone, George here. Welcome back to the channel. One of the most frustrating things that can happen to us as scapers is we get a beautiful scape done and within a few weeks our plants start to melt. Today we're going to talk about why that happens and what we can do to prevent it. So let's get to it. One of the most frustrating things that we can have happen to us as scapers is just a few weeks into having what we think is a beautifully designed tank and a lot of work that's gone into it is to start to see some of our plants melt. Today we're going to talk about what the root causes are and what you can do with just a few small steps to prevent this from happening. As I said earlier, one of the most frustrating things that can happen to us in the hobby is to watch our plants melt down right before our eyes, just two, three weeks into a beautiful scape that we've done that we were really uh, excited about and it's beautiful. When you look at it, you, you think that you've done an absolutely fabulous job and then all of a sudden, you see these subtleties in your plants. They start to change right before your eyes, sometimes even overnight. And we ask ourselves, what's causing this? Well, I have two reasons why I think this happens. And I've done a lot of research on why. And I think that as you listen to what I have to say here, you're gonna understand a little bit, I think, about why the transition from the little containers that we get these plants in or uh, the little packages that we get the plants in as to why they go from those small containers to our aquarium and then they melt down. Well, the first reason I believe is temperature. Oftentimes I have found in my own tanks that many times the tanks are set just too high in temperature not because we've done it on purpose, but because of subtle little things that we don't even think about. One of the main reasons I think that temperature can get out of control is number one, the heater in your tank. Invest in a good heater if you're going to use one at all. One of the things that people do is they skimp on the quality of the heater and they have a heater that continuously reaches a point in temperature and then it backs off, then it turns back on, backs off, turns back on. It's in a continuous cycle and to the point where the heater is going to fail. Now, how do we know when a heater has failed? It's going to do one of two things. It's going to change the temperature in the water to be too cold. It's not going to be sufficient for the fish. Or the coils are going to lose their ability to have any kind of a thermostat and they're just going to heat up and create an environment where it's too hot. So the first thing I would tell you when you're looking at temperature is to make sure that you've got a good heater in your tank, a high quality heater that has a good regulator in there that turns uh, the temperature back and forth with subtle movements, not dramatic movements. And these are a little bit more expensive but they're well worth it because what you're going to save in the long run as far as plants and uh, fish are really going to make up the difference in the price of the heater that you buy. Now what happens with heat is when we fail to properly have some kind of way of monitoring, monitoring the heat in our, our tanks, this is where we get into trouble. And one of the main root causes of it is the heater. And there's one other thing. If you look at the top of this tank, it has a cover on it. What happens when we put a cover on the top of a fish tank? Heat gets trapped inside. So we have our thermostat set at 76 to 78 degrees, somewhere in there. That's what most normal fish like. And uh, we... Um, typically we'll set these to that temperature and uh, we think that we're doing uh, the right thing. Well, we are, and that's approximately where you need to be on the heat of your um, aquarium. But we don't take into facts that 
we have a top on this that is trapping heat within it and creating an environment where we no longer have control over that heat any longer. This is something that we need to make sure that we're checking regularly because what happens is when that heat gets trapped in there, it spikes the temperature up sometimes two, three, even four degrees. So if you have a tank that's sitting at 76, now you're up to 80. If you have a temperature set at 78, now you're up to 82. What happens to your plants in that process? It's just too hot and the plants cannot handle those kinds of temperatures. So therefore, over time, they start to rot or melt. Now we call it melting in the industry, but really what's happening is the plants are melting down because they're basically rotting from within themselves. And this is caused by too much heat. Now you can take almost any plant and watch this sort of thing happen over a period of time. And we're gonna talk about the next thing that I think is also an important factor as to why plants melt or die just after a few weeks. One of the second aspects of problems with plants melting, I think has a lot to do with light. When you look at the lighting situation that you have in your tank, there's a couple of things that you need to factor in. Number one, what kind of light are you using? Are you using full spectrum lights? Are you using just simple lights that emit uh, white or blue and have no red or green spectrum in them? And uh, this can be part of the problem as well. One of the things that I've found out with lights that has been very frustrating to me is how much time should you leave a light on during the day for your plants to have photosynthesis. Now, if you're running CO2, you don't run CO2 unless you have lights on. CO2 does absolutely nothing for your plants if you're running uh, the CO2 and you don't have the lights on in the tank. So in other words, if you're running CO2, turn your CO2 off in the evening so that you're not wasting it because it's doing absolutely nothing. Now during the day, I have found that six to eight hours of light is very, very uh, effective in keeping plants healthy uh, with or without CO2. Now, I have reduced this down to six hours a day because I have found that some of the moderate to lower light plants seem to do better in this environment. Now, this particular tank that you're looking at right now would be a very good example of moderate to low uh, need light plants. So, when we're taking a look at the combination of temperature and light, the two things that we can take from that is how much light are the plants getting and what is the temperature of your tank. If you put the two of these together, this gives us a scenario in which we can understand why plants melt. Number one, if the temperature in the tank is too high, as we talked about earlier, and the lights on your tank are on for way too long during the day. If we do this, what ends up happening is the plants don't adjust correctly and they begin to melt. Now, I hope that you find this uh, interesting and I hope that you find some uh, ability to adjust your plants correctly uh, uh, by using proper light and temperature in your tank because these two things I have found are so important and they can make all the difference in the world as to whether or not your plants melt over time. Plants are expensive. They're one of the most expensive things we can put into a tank and what I tell everyone with plants is that when you're putting a scape together, plant the tank as heavy as you possibly can afford at the time because trying to plant a tank later you can do that, but it's much, much harder. 
and your tank just gets off to a better start. Now, as we know, plants give off oxygen for your fish. There's all kinds of benefits to having live plants in your tank. And if you go by these simple rules that I just talked about, and you take into consideration the temperature of your tank, try to keep it between 75 and 78 degrees, factoring in whether or not you have a top on your tank. The reason why we have tops on the tank is not because they look pretty, but because fish can jump out and those sort of things. And it's important that uh, we protect the fish by having a top on there. So sometimes there's a, we can't get uh, away from that. So we have to have it. Take into consideration that if you have your um, heater set at 78 degrees, you're probably going to add about four, well, three to four degrees approximately to the tank by putting a top on it because it's going to seal that heat in there. That's what all that condensation is on the top of your glass or your plexiglass or whatever you're using at the top of your tank. And then the second thing is how much time are you uh, allowing your lights to be on during the day and how important is this into uh, taking the combination of heat and the time and spectrum of the light that you have on what are those two things doing and what environment is that creating for your plants to either thrive or die so i hope you got a lot out of that today and uh, we're going to have a, a final um, summation of all of this in just a minute here i hope you were able to get something out of what we talked about here because as i said plants are one of the most expensive uh, components to our fish tanks and it's really important that we understand how they uh, help the environment of our tank and how they thrive in a tank by just doing a couple of different things that we can sort of adjust and make sure that we're doing um, the best that we possibly can to keep those plants alive. Now in summation we talked about temperature and we talked about lighting. And if you go back and you listen to what I said and you take the combination of those two things, you're gonna find that that's such a, an important aspect as to the health of your plants. And I hope that you'll um, sort of see this and understand why this happens. Um, it's, it's a scientific fact that the heat in your tank um, combined with the light in your tank is going to absolutely make a difference on whether or not your plants start to melt. So many people make this mistake and so many people don't understand why it's happening and I hope that I've explained it a little bit to give you some idea as to what you can do to prevent it. We'll talk again soon. I appreciate it. Subscribe, like, hit that uh, bell up at the top there so that you always know when I have a new video coming out and above all leave some comments I love the comments I like to talk to people about different things and I hope you do that we'll see you again soon